Look at what this gimbal can do. So right now it's on, it's ready to use. If I push the off button, it self locks ready for travel. So no need to click those locks anymore. If I then turn it back on, it unlocks itself completely ready for use. Whoa. You also don't need these anymore, wires. There's zero attached right now. However, I can still hit record and it triggers record on the camera. That is now done wirelessly. You can stop recording as well. We also now have a 12 hour battery life built into the handle, which is now detachable. We also have a bigger screen, which is touch screen and a better design menu. Now this is the RS3, but there is an RS3 Pro. However, this has the same stabilization algorithm in it for getting the most stable shots you possibly can. You might be wondering where the RS3 stands in terms of DJI's lineup of gimbals. Essentially, the RS3 is a replacement of what was the RS-C2. So we have an RS3, we also have an RS3 Pro. The RS3 Pro is the equivalent of what the RS2 was. So super high level, what is different with the RS3? Well, as I already showed you, we have the on off auto locking system. So the gimbal locks itself when you turn it off, unlocks itself when you turn it back on. You can still unlock all of the switches on the side here, but you really don't need to anymore. You can customize how this works in the menu system as well. So if you decide for whatever reason you don't like to have the locks auto locking, auto unlocking, you can turn that off. Similarly, you are able to lock the gimbal by tapping the lock button on the side there. That puts it into sleep mode, turns off the motors, and then locks everything. Then when you push it again, it takes it out of sleep mode and it's ready to use again. This is something that you really don't appreciate until you've used it. It just works. I didn't think something like this could possibly exist. And now that's pretty much all I want to use in a gimbal. In terms of payload, the official specs are three kilograms or 6.6 .6 pounds. You can get a variety of very popular mirrorless cameras on the market, balanced on this with no issue. And as you can see right here, I have a 7200 F4 balanced on the RS3 with the A7S3 with zero issues. It's balanced completely fine. We also now have the knob for finer adjustments for balancing, which we had on the RS2, but we didn't have on the RSC2. You had to slide it back and forth. That knob just makes it a lot easier for finer adjustments to balance. You have wireless Bluetooth control. No reason to use these anymore for triggering your recording. You can tap record, it does it via Bluetooth. For setting up Bluetooth, it's incredibly easy to do and you only have to do it once. So swipe down from the top, go to your Bluetooth menu there. Make sure Bluetooth pairing mode is turned on on your camera and Bluetooth is enabled on your camera. Click on confirm and then essentially connect to the camera you want to connect to. So we're gonna go to the A7S3, tap connect. It will then confirm on the camera, which is already done and that's it. It's as easy as that. You don't have to pair it every single time either. You just literally turn the gimbal on, turn your camera on, and they just link, and it's good to go. Now this is obviously the newer version of the RS-C2, and we had the little tiny non-touch screen on the RS-C2. Now we have the same touch screen that we have from the RS-2. Things are laid out a little bit better. You don't accidentally tap buttons by mistake now. Having this touch screen on here with the mode dial on the side, which lets you quickly swap between different modes. You can go between pan, tilt, follow, pan, follow, and FPV mode, just quickly by sliding that dial up and down between one of the three different options you have available. On the RS3, you now have a detachable battery, which you can detach by flicking that, pushing it up, and then sliding that directly out. So if you wanted to have a couple of these, if you needed more than 12 hours of battery life, you could do so. Been using this gimbal for a few weeks and I've tried it for a bunch of different scenarios and I wanted to do something that was more fast paced. So let's take a look at that. That's all shot using the fast settings on the gimbal, which you can get to by just tapping on slow, which I have it set to right now. And then you can slide across between fast, medium, slow, and custom. Similarly, I wanna do something with the slow settings as well, which you will have seen scattered throughout this video. Most of my real estate content is all done using the slow settings. I've got it set up right now so that the M button actually locks the screen, which is really convenient. So when I tap that, now the screen can't be accidentally touched. When I tap it again, it unlocks the screen. Now you probably have seen these handles in some of the video I've been showing today using this gimbal. These aren't handles that are new from DJI. These have been out a while, but this is the first time I've actually used them and had hands on. They're really well designed, they're super high quality, they feel really nice to hold. And one of the things I actually quite like about this is that you can loosen this off and now that becomes a handle for underslung 
briefcase mode. I do like that there is a ton of mounting points on here as well. Just many different ways to mount pretty much anything you could possibly want to mount on here. I've had monitors attached to this. I've had the phone holder attached to this so that you can then use the DJI Raven Eye system, which mounts underneath here, and then wirelessly sends a signal to your phone and you can control it. And there's a bunch of things you can do with that. And we'll chat more about that later. Now to balance the gimbal, it's the same process as normal. Yes, we have the auto locks, but you just need to unlock it all properly yourself manually, and then you balance it, and then you can turn it on and everything is good. The auto locks will work from there. But to balance it, same method as normal. So the menus have been completely redesigned. It's very easy to navigate them now to swipe up. You just swipe up. Then you have access to your joystick speed and smoothness, your dial functions, which is what controls the dial on the back there. I have mine actually set to focus motor, but you can set it to whatever you want. You have your dial speed. And then if you swipe across, you have your dial smoothness, your reverse dial and what uh, the M button control. So in my case, I have it set to lock. You can actually have it set to take photos as well. So that was swiping up. You also have swiping down. So you have your silent mode on and off, locking the gimbal, which I have assigned to my M button, your basic settings, and then Bluetooth control. I'm not gonna go through everything you have in the settings, but there is a ton of things in there. The big thing for me, the focus motor in and out points. So that's where you can calibrate those. It's easier than ever to attach a follow focus system now, which you get supplied with the RS3 kit as well. You use this little plate, that says focus motor on it. Screw this directly into the bottom of the camera. Attach that to the gimbal. And you'll see just here, this actually screws directly into the side of that focus motor plate. I actually have the focus motor already attached to the rail. Again, this all comes with the RS3 kit. Just screw that into the side like so, just by hand. Balance your gimbal. You'll probably be a little bit off. Now you've attached that focus motor. Turn it on. Recalibrate. It doesn't take that long, actually. Make sure the teeth on the lens are engaged with the teeth on the motor. So when you turn this, it should turn the zoom or focus on your lens. Now for this one, you do need cables. So attach the cable. Then in the menu, just go through and change it so that your dial controls the zoom or focus motor. And now in my case, I have control over the 1635 zoom directly on the gimbal itself. Now the Raven Eye transmission system is something that allows you to essentially control the camera and the gimbal via your phone. And this actually sits directly underneath just here. It's gonna be kind of hard for me to show you on video, but it literally just slides in there. Your cables, you gotta use a couple of them. There's a USB-C to C, and then there is an HDMI to mini HDMI. Make sure you plug them in the right way, otherwise it won't work. So your mini HDMI, I think it's the mini HDMI, that's what that's called. It's the small HDMI end anyway. That goes into the bottom of the Raven Eye system. Then the other end goes into my A7S III. On the other side of the Raven Eye system, you've got a USB-C port. Plug in your cable. And then that goes into the bottom port right there. That might throw your balance off a little bit, so it's probably a good idea to rebalance it, recalibrate it. One thing I do really like is that the calibration button is now right on the top left here. So you can literally just tap that to calibrate. So if you're constantly changing your setups around, it's really quick and easy. You don't need to go through the menus to calibrate the gimbal and get the motors to the right performance. This is where these handles were coming in useful for me. Attach these to the gimbal on the NATO rails on the side. Now I've been using a variety of different setups over the past couple of weeks of using this with a monitor. We're gonna be using the DJI phone mount because I want to use the Raven Eye system with my phone. This is from Small Rig. I will put a link down below if you're interested. This screws directly onto the DJI phone mount. Now, because you have a plethora of different mounting options on these handles, you can go wherever you want. I'm gonna go into this one in the bottom just here. One of the nice things about this Small Rig one is you can basically move it around however you want it and then tighten it up. Now I can put my phone in. To set up Raven Eye, I'm not gonna show you how to do it. There's a bunch of tutorials out there. Essentially, you have to connect to the Wi-Fi signal that the Raven Eye system puts out. Mine's already done, so we're just gonna connect. Once you have the Raven Eye system set up, it does work every time you just turn it on afterwards. Quick little note here, if you do have your gimbal connected to your phone for the DJI Ronum app, it will actually disconnect from the app because it's going to go over the Raven Eye connection system opposed to how it connects via Bluetooth. So by having this on here, you can essentially now have a, a wireless signal with pretty low latency for monitoring everything on your camera. You can control the gimbal, control the recording functions of the camera, you can track things. But there was a specific style of shot that I wanted to achieve, and we did it by using the force mobile function of the Raven Eye system, which allows you to essentially move your phone and control the gimbal and the camera. So the goal for this is we're gonna put the gimbal on top of a tripod, and then I'm gonna lift the tripod up, 
and we're going to try and use the Force Mobile, which is where you can move your phone and it will control the gimbal remotely. We're going to try and use that to get Garrett's sync in the shot. So the camera will be up and then it will follow the ball down. We have to one hand hold this. One more. One thing I do like about the Raveneye video transmission signal is when you turn the camera on, like if everything's off, like our battery just died, I thought you'd have to resync everything back up. You don't. I can literally, like right now, it's not on on the phone there, but if I turn the camera on, it literally, I mean, he says it's going to include this. Yeah, there you go. Just connected itself straight away, so pretty easy to use. I actually was impressed by that. Thank you for watching today's video about the DJI Ronin RS3. If you're interested in either this or the RS3 Pro or the RSC2 or any of other gimbals that I've got, I will link them all below down for you. You can click on them, take a look. Thanks for watching. I got nothing else for you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.